Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. It's Clay Ramage back again with another Goodwill Bins haul today. Um, I was away for the weekend at a men's retreat down in the Wisconsin Dells. So uh, I came back first thing this morning, went to the bins. I'm very tired because I didn't get a lot of sleep over the weekend, which is great. It was a great time. Um, but uh, yeah, so if I seem a little slow today, that's why, because I'm tired and trying to uh, recover from a great time. Got to see a lot of old friends and and have some great talks and discussions and lessons. And so, um, yeah. Anyway, why don't we just get right into the haul? If you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, thank you for subscribing to this channel, helping support our little endeavors here. And I hope you enjoy this kind of content, thrifting and reselling, and an old guy talking about stuff that he think might be worth something that somebody might want to buy someday. <laughs> So anyway, um, I, I'm just going to start right here in front of me. I spent a total of 40 some dollars today, but some of it is for um, the bot stuff for personal use. And then, um, all right, I'm just going to start with this. The biggest item I got was this. It's a, it's a guitar case. Actually, what's in here? I didn't even look in here. Nothing's in there. Um, so this was a guitar case, and I saw it said Yamaha on it. Yamaha is, makes good instruments. So I said, oh, let me check and see if the guitar's in there. And sure enough, the guitar's in here. And this is a junior model, so it's a smaller model than, uh, you know, a full-sized guitar. Kind of like what they do with violins, half, three-quarters, that kind of thing. Um, so this is great for children to learn to play on because it's a little smaller scale. And so when I went to check out, I asked the lady, I said, you know, this is kind of heavy. Can you give me a deal on this? And so she charged me $2 for this and the bag. And these are, uh, you know, $70 to $100 guitars on the used market. So, and then with the gig bag, you know, that adds a little bit with it as well. And a gig bag is just a soft-sided one to carry around. So yeah, so that was an exciting find. And then... Um, I bought two other boards that I thought would work great for puzzles, and there I left them in the car, um, and they're for personal use. But they were big and heavy too, and she charged me two dollars each for those two. So for six dollars, I got all of that stuff, which was saved me a lot of money. I was like, what did I spend forty-seven dollars on? But our bins raised the prices. So used to be the lower tier was a dollar twenty-nine, no, a dollar forty-nine, dollar seventy-nine, dollar ninety-nine. Now it's dollar sixty-nine, dollar. 89 to 19. So, and glassware is 50 cents each, electronics are $1.19. So everything went up 20 cents. So, okay. It is what it is. I know inflation's hitting everybody, I guess. So, that's why I probably spent a little more. But I found this box. It's a box of Ertl tractors. And it's got four different models in this. So they're the miniature tractors. And I opened it up, and sure enough, they're still in the little boxes. Um, so, and you can tell somebody did have them open and probably displayed, but they just saved the box. So, but John Deere tractors are very collectible. So, that was a good find, I thought. Um, so, I don't know. I'll pro I haven't even looked them up, so I'll probably look them up on eBay and see what's going on. Then I found two different large glass ornaments. They're both hand-blown. Both have their labels on them. This one is Medina, M-D-I-N-A, Medina Glass, uh, which is, you know, a good quality glass blower. Some of their stuff can go for good money. Um, and so this one, yeah, it's just got the label. It is signed on the bottom by the artist and then the model number, which is really cool, but I don't think you'll be able to see it. So, yeah, these will go down to the pink elephant, I think. Um, I've been able to sell these down there before because we have a lot of glass collectors, which is really cool. Now, this one is by the California Glass Studio. Um, this one is not signed, but it does have the label on it. Hand-blown, beautiful purple iridescent um, coloring on it. So that's pretty cool. Pretty heavy, too. And these are great. You could display them all year round. It's not like they're Christmas ornaments, per se. They're just ornamental glass objects that are designed to hang so you can get those little stands and hang them on there so that's pretty fun 
I also picked up, and I picked up one at the bins over a year ago, and it finally sold, and that's a Superstition Pottery piece. They're marked on the bottom, Superstition Pottery. I always, Superstition Stoneware, sorry. Um, I always think they're so funny. This one's a much smaller one. They, they typically have these southwestern scenes on them in different colors, and uh, so yeah, so I picked this up again. It didn't cost me very much, 50 cents maybe on this little bracelet it's a glass bead and possibly silver but I don't think so I haven't really looked into it so I did find a piece of jewelry today and then <laughs> look at this little copper hammered pot urn ewer whatever you want to call it um that was in a little baggie with these other glass items so I did find some number of little glass items it's a little tiny bird hand blown bird little kind of like Hershey's kiss style glass blown object and then one of those little candy thingies so that was cool and I found some books ever since I found that HG Wells book at the bins I've been looking for more and guess what I found another HG Wells book uh, obviously this is not a first edition uh, nor is it uh, a great edition it's a 1983 illustrated classics of the war of the worlds so it's got, you know, it's designed for younger folks to read. Um, but I said that was cool. So that, these are, I sell these at the Pink Elephant, these juvenile type books and children's books. Vintage ones seem to do well for me. So I pick them up. Um, then I found some, again, novels, Herman Folk, City Boy. Then I got another one of his Adora, Aurora Dawn. John Steinbeck's The Red Pony and The Red Badge of Courage. So they're all well-known titles, older um, publications, you know, not first year or anything like that, but older. Then I also found, and I was excited about these, there was a bag of toys and I saw some um, little booklets in there and Pets from Mother Goose to Color. So these are little tiny coloring books. How many other? I didn't even look to see, but yeah, some of them have been, and that one at least have been colored. The Farmer in the Dell. Riddles and Rhymes with Pictures to Color. I wonder if, oh yeah, some of these have been colored, some haven't. So yeah, so I'll have to look through and see if any of them are like that. But the graphics are just awesome. That's what I love about these, you know, 1960-ish publications. Um, here's one. Alphabet Scramble with the puppy dog. Little Boy Blue. The Pals Coloring Book with the puppies. Little Chief Coloring Book. Follow the Stars and Make a Picture. Um, Mary Mary Quite Contrary. She's missing the cover. Um, hidden paths can you find them and this one just says coloring book oh boy oh king cole's coloring book and playtime book to color so it's uh, just a great collection all of the same series so i don't know what i'm going to do with those honestly i just thought they were great so i picked them up so all right the big i, I seem to be in finding things in lots you know or large collections and um Oh, that's just some bubble wrap I picked up. Um, today it was scarves and hankies. There's a huge lot in one bin, just a huge pile of scarves and hankies. And I was like, ooh, let's take a look. So some of the first ones I found, or were sorting, the first ones on top of the pile, let's just put it that way. Were, like this one is an Australia hanky, still in the plastic, still with the original label on it. I thought, okay. That's a good sign. And then there was a series of these. These are just plain, I shouldn't say plain. They're white hankies with different things, but they still had the labels on them. This one's a little embroidered with the label. There's another one with the label on them. So that, that kind of led me to keep digging. So I did. And then, um, like there's this blue and white one, blue with white border on it. So that's not just a plain one nothing fancy there's some you know of these 
ties in there too. Head scarf, or now actually this is just a, a long scarf of different colors. There's multiple different colors of these lighter weight ones. But then there's also, like this is a Virginia Zito hanky. Look at that design, isn't it awesome? It's all birds and butterflies. And still got the original label on the bottom, Kimball. So that's another awesome one. I love the graphics on this one. Look at that. And this one is a, it's called Desin Dep, D-E-S-S-I-N-D-E-P. And these are like $10, $10 little hankies, but I love the graphics on them, they're so cool. Here's a Vera, hanky in green, black and white. There's a floral one, unlabeled, just a plain one. Here is a Gene Miller. I love it when they're designer ones. This is from, you know, mid-century, 50s, 60s. Look at those stylized flowers. They're just awesome. So that's another, you know, 10, maybe $12, 12 to $15 hanky. Uh, here's another floral one with roses. Then there was this one. It's all terribly stained, so it's going in the garbage. Just like that. Um, <laughs> here's another floral one. Again, I just grabbed the whole pile and put it in my cart. I didn't sort through them because each one probably is a nickel, if that. So I thought it's not worth my time to sit here and try to sort through them. I love this one. This is a Lilies of the Valley hanky with the scalloped edges. Isn't that beautiful? Love that one. And then there's these scarves. This one's unmarked, just a nice colorful scarf. And they actually sell a lot of scarves down with Pink Elephant too. So I bought this, actually Cindy found it for me. It's a circle thing to put all your scarves in. So I have that down there now. And uh, so a lot of these will go down there. You know, and I know I put like five bucks on, but again, when I'm paying 10 cents each, why not? And they sell, so hey, it's a good thing. This one I think is actually a handkerchief, not a handkerchief, um, like a napkin, but it's by itself. So I don't know what I'll do with it. Probably put it in a lot of miscellaneous things. Here's another scarf, nice yellow and brown color. No name or tag on it. There's a pink one, there's a striped one, nice purple, blue and, I mean, it looks purplish, but it's actually blue and burgundy. Here's this colorful striped one. I love this one. This is like one of my favorites. And this was another one of the first ones I saw. Um, and this would be a souvenir scarf. Uh, and this is uh, Martinique, the island of Martinique. So, but it's just beautiful. Love the graphics on it. Kind of tells the story, the history of Martinique. So, so yeah, so that one's cool. Let's see. And there's this animal print one. And I thought this one, it did, yeah, it has a tag on it and it's still has a price on it, $6. Uh, City Silk Company. So, kind of a nice one. Uh, this one is really unique. It's teapots and stuff, but it has tea, two teapots, one on uh, one on the corners. So, I just thought that I'd never seen that before. That's kind of cool. And it feels like it's real silk too. This is a Jeannie Johansson scarf. Another designer that's somewhat collectible, not highly collectible, but. You know, it's probably a $15 scarf if I can get it unfolded. It's a large one. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Pretty sweet. And then there's this one. I know I'm spending a lot of time on hankies, but I don't have that much other stuff out of, uh, behind those. So there's a nice striped one. Here's another very, very colorful one. This one I thought had a name on it. Oh, yeah, this is an Echo. Echo brand. It's a nice red scarf with a hound's tooth pattern, looks like. There's a pink one. It still has the tag. This was a $5 Mademoiselle made in the USA, all polyester. I think this one is, I thought, was just, again, very unique design on it. And the coloration is most unusual too, but kind of cool. 
and there's this floral one that's still tied. There's this one still has the Yonkers tag on it. This is a more of a winter scarf, heavier weight, paisley and plaid style. Didn't see a name on it. Take a look here. There's something collective made in Japan. Oh, so this is a vintage one. It's very nice. And then last, well, almost last, was this one, another giraffe print. And this one is made in Italy. It's still got the tag in $4.99 for the price on it. So then there were a couple other things. Somehow I grabbed a uh, thing of brand new gloves in the package. That's kind of nice. There's a blue. There's a camo in blue. Another tie. And a green one with a little ribbon around the outside. And a brown. And then a purplish floral print. So yeah, so that's kind of the scarves that we got. So that's a lot of scarves. But again, I, if I paid a dollar for the whole pile, I'd be lucky, you know. Oh, this one was a Vera too, I just saw. It's got marked Vera. And then I saw these and I picked them up. They're uh, steaks, Easter eggs. I assume you either put them in your plants or you could do a number of things. But they're dated, dated the 1980s and 90s. Um, Diff just different different egg decorations of some sort so but that was pretty cool got a little beater i've sold these before um and uh these are really nice heavy duty with the gears so and again these are like 15 dollar beaters um i found a styrofoam mannequin head i use these now this one has a suction cup on the bottom, which is nice to have it stay. I use these when I take photos for uh, eBay. So, you know, for hats, for, um, not for jewelry. I have another one I use for jewelry, but, but for hats and maybe even scarves, if I want to advertise them that way. And again, quarter, 50 cents. Well, today's price is maybe 50 cents. I did pick up a series of prints uh, bird prints that are hand colored. These prints are a, 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 a 1865 printed. That's when they were printed. They were framed much later um, by a frame shop and they tell the whole story on the back. Um, so they're a Morris print published in 1865 is colored at the time of publication, which means these were all colored back in 1865. And so there's that one, which is the blackbird this one they don't say what they are that's a little looks like finch Ooh. a dusky grebe oh that's a twite sorry this is a dusky grebe it's printed on the bottom but it's really hard to read it's very faint it's kind of faded it looks like and then this is a wryneck and again they're all from the same series all in the same frames and because of that, I thought, you know, we should do well with those. So I picked them up. Um, this is a olive wood uh, nativity holy family carving. Um, it's marked on the bottom, workshop. Mm, it's kind of hard to read, but it's stamped. But I've actually done well selling these. So, um, you know, like 15 to $25, depending upon what statue and what it's about and how well it's carved. This one is, this would be because they don't have any detail on the face. They price these by the amount of detail. So the more finely carved it is, the more money it is. And obviously it takes more time, right? So these that have very limited detail um, are the least expensive. Then I found these two pieces. They're actually silver plate, they're nickel silver. But you'll notice they're kind of yellowish, so it kind of looks like they're, the plating has come off. But actually, that's kind of what happens with nickel silver as it tarnishes. It turns more of a yellowish color. Sometimes it's extremely hard to get that yellowish color out. But they're marked NS on the bottom. That's all they're marked. Um, this one is EPNS, so it's electroplate nickel silver. So yeah sometimes it's and that's where i find it hard sometimes if it's just been polished so much the nickel silver's been polished off or you know as it just is colored with 
some sort of chemical reaction, which happens sometimes. This one, I do believe, is um, the, the plating is gone. And the reason I say that is because you can see the plating inside these grooves, which wouldn't have gotten polished nearly as hard. So anyway, that's my little silver lesson for this morning. Then I found these two tiles. Um, these are a Wendy Costa, C-O-S-T-A tiles. Um, and on the back, the new, it still has the original price sticker, $25 on them. And they sell for 15 to 20 today. So it looks like somebody used them you know, put the hanger on it to hang on the wall. And then they put the little rubber stopper. So maybe they used them both as trivets and as wall hangings. But I thought they were cute. They're cats. So they'll sell well. Found this Irish pot. This is made in Ireland. It's a Tara. And it's still got the original sticker and it's marked on the bottom. So, um, again, it's not a expensive vase, $15. But I liked it. Then I found a Holland um, mug. Again, twelve to fifteen dollars for this little mug, Norelco. It's marked on the bottom, made in Holland. But this blue and white seems to do well. And if you watch Nicole North Garden's channel, she decorates with a lot of the blue and white stuff. All right. Then I found some frames. This one, I picked this one up just because it still has the original insert that advertised this frame. Um, so it's a five by seven metal craft, guaranteed not to tarnish. And this is one that had the little plastic inserts. And it's missing it on the sides, just top and bottom now, uh, to make it look like uh, Mother of Pearl. But yeah, I just love the graphic on that one. And then I found this. I love the frame. The print itself is faded. That's why it's got that bluish coloring, bluish purplish, because it's faded. And, and the blues and purples are the ones that fade the least. So the reds, the yellows are what fade and, and leave that bluish tone to it. So it was exposed to some light at some point in his life and uh, kind of faded but i bought it for the frame it's a plastic frame but it's a beautiful little frame all right now this is a little you know tray for your cosmetics or jewelry or whatever and what was funny i was working at the pink elephant on thursday before i left for the retreat and we had a lady looking for exactly this size and could not find any in the pink elephant they were either they were all large so I think it was hilarious. I go to the bins today and I find exactly what she was looking for. Um, so now we'll have one for the next time somebody's looking for one. It does have a dent here, but that's easy enough. This metal is fairly soft. I'll be able to bend that back. And then I love this frame. This is a beautiful ornate frame with roses, roses on the top. Now I did at one time have a, you know, stand on it, but now it's just a hanging because the stand is gone. It probably was not strong enough for the weight of the frame. But yeah, I just I thought that was a really cool frame. Almost done, folks. And then we have, I saw this box, and it, I saw it said souvenir and salvo, but I didn't know what that meant. So I opened it up, and inside is this little wooden doll. Scandinavian doll, I don't know what country. Oh, here, we'll, there's a piece of paper in here, what does it say? I might learn something. Ooh, no, doesn't. Estonian souvenir handmade. Okay, so this is from Estonia. There you go. And she's sweet. She's very sweet. I like that. All right, so Estonia it is. And then just a few more little items. In the same bin, I found some, oh, the coloring books. There were these little toys. This is a vintage McDonald's. Um, Ronald McDonald, 1985. So I picked him up. Berenstein Bears character. Again, he was from the 80s. Then I picked up two clown figures. I'm not a clown fan, but clowns sell. I've had very good luck with selling clowns. And since these are both made in Hong Kong, they're vintage clowns. So I was like, we're going for it. Then I picked up this vase. It doesn't look like much. It's just a little miniature vase. But look at this side. It's a face. I've never seen one like this. And that's why I got it. Um, it was originally 69 cents. But I've never seen a full face miniature picture. <laughs> I thought that was awesome. And then last but not least, and yes, indeed, I did find sterling silver today. Um, and I saw this box and it had a rattle. So I opened it up. There was this pendant in here. So I pulled it, picked it up, marked 925 on the back. 
but it's a beautiful pendant. This stone, I don't even know what kind of stone that is. Or is it plastic? I can't really tell, honestly. It's most unique, but it's a beautiful little design um, in this box, and it says La Casa del Jade. Oh, so maybe that's a jade. If this is the original box for me. I don't know, I have to do some more research on that. But anyway, that's the last item of our haul. Thanks guys for watching. Catch you next time.